Hey, it's Adam here and you're watching The Culture Hack. Where we're talking about how to create engaged workspaces that unlock the potential of your teams and drive your business forward in ways you've never seen. So stay tuned. Okay, welcome to another episode of The Culture Hack. Today is super exciting. I have fellow marketer extraordinaire, Kevin Wilhelm on with me. He is the founder and CEO of Pod Marketing. So welcome, Kevin. Thanks so much for coming. Yeah, thanks, Adam. Appreciate it, man. Nice to be here. Yeah. Um, first and foremost, for those who haven't heard of Pod Marketing, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what you guys do and what your story is? Sure. We're uh, we're a digital marketing agency. We've been around uh, just about ten years, so this is our tenth year in business. And uh, we started with the idea of creating a company that would support industries rather than be a product-based company or uh, geographically based. So. Uh, we went into home services was our first foyer into verticalized marketing and we expanded into healthcare and found a lot of success there. So right now we operate uh, different brands under the different industries so that they know that we sort of service their industry. But we have one in the dental space, one in the optometry space, uh, one in the senior living uh, space, elder care, and then we have uh, a new one in the medical aesthetics space. So we operate four different brands. Uh, for those industries and we are a full service agency uh, providing everything from you know, branding to website development to lead generation to content creation and social media and what have you. So we really help those businesses achieve their objectives, whatever those are. Okay, amazing. The power of telling your story in a compelling way, right? Absolutely. Yeah, easier, easier said than done. I feel like we've been working on our story changes every year as we evolve, right? So. Yeah, as it does, right? And you, and you kind of find what your story really is and who your mm -hmm. audience is and what they care about and trying to adapt to that. So it makes sense. Right? You know, and uh, not just without, but within. When we talk about your team, we talk about engagement. So finding that resonance with your team members, what does that engagement mean to you at Pod Marketing? Uh, yeah, so when we talk about employee engagement, a lot of that is, you know, you have your table stakes, which is your uh, overall, like, just the basic hygiene, as they call it. So employee hygiene, so that's the compensation, that's the benefits, uh, vacation time, things like that. Uh, but from there, then it's the purposefulness. It's the work they get to do and the environment in which they get to do that. And so we try to create our purpose as an organization and cross, you know, reference that with theirs. And, and that's really the purpose driven. Why do you get up in the morning? Why do you do what you do? And, and why do you mm -hmm. want to work here? Um, and then the, the idea is to create, um, you know, I, I guess an environment that allows people to thrive and uh, find personal fulfillment and professional fulfillment in the work they get to do. So there's creativity involved, there's a uh, progression, uh, there is a great relationship with their manager. We have a lot of structure around uh, just everything to do with like, you know, policies and process, like get, kind of getting all that stuff out of the way and then um, making sure that we also get to add fun into what we do and, and add mm -hmm. joy. I think a lot of jobs are missing the word joy and we try to try to inject that where we can and have some fun and don't take ourselves too seriously. So it's a place that people get to work instead of a place that they have to work and we try to intentionally create an environment that uh, fosters that. Oh, I like that. Get to work versus have to work. I haven't heard that one. But I get I get the sense that your first day at pod marketing is kind of an experience. Yeah, we've evolved that over the years. Um, it used to be probably the worst. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's and so we again, I use the word intentionality. We've been very intentional with, with what we do and uh, it evolved from about three years ago, we used to just scavenger hunt. You'd come in and over the course of the day, you would meet with all key individuals and you would have to do something with them to create an experience. Mine was, I would teach you how to ride a hoverboard, um, you know, have a little obstacle course in the office. And so, you know, their first experience with me is that. We've evolved that now. And so our onboarding process is, uh, we actually have one hire date a month. And so we have everybody who's starting in that month comes in together as sort of an onboarding group and class. And so they get to build connection and relationship with their onboarding group. And then their entire first week is not sort of on the tools, if you will. It's not doing the job they were hired to do. It's about learning the company and really being immersed. And so they get to meet all the managers. They get to have a, we do a, a big pizza lunch and everybody's invited to come and meet the new, the new class. 
uh, they have to film a TikTok and film like a social media thing with our internal social media company or a, a social media team. Um, you know, I do a, it finishes at the end on the Friday, right before happy hour, I do a culture presentation. So I talk about, you know, I kind of bring it all together, everything they've learned throughout the week. And uh, we tie in, you know, the why we're here and what the expectations are. And then um, really just explain the, the norms, the cultures, all of that. And so at the end, I ask them if, if this whole week has really led up to this moment, do you want to be here? Is this what you signed up for? And if they say yes, they come to work on Monday, they get to work on the tools, I guess, at that point. And then if they say no, then, you know, we have a cheers anyway and call it a day, still batting 100. So we haven't had anyone say no, but uh, that possibility is still there. Okay. Wow, that that might be the best, most well thought out onboarding week that I have come across. So fantastic, nicely done. I like, I like the idea of bringing the class together once a month versus sporadically starting all over the place. It kind of calms the craziness that comes with onboarding a new person, right? Yeah, so. and, and also we get to introduce the class to the company uh, on a team wide kickoff meeting on Monday morning, so everybody knows that they're starting and they get to go out of their way and really get to know them. And um, you know, the feedback is they just feel very welcomed because everybody knows there's a class, you know, it's usually three to eight people somewhere in that range. And um, you know, just throughout the week, they get to have casual conversations. They're not worried about trying to learn their job quickly. They're, they just take notes and they're just there to absorb and learn and ask questions. So they go home and they have a, a very full head, uh, but usually they're pretty, they're pretty amped up and ready to get started. Okay, amazing. You know, and you, you talked about how the, you know, your onboarding, for example, wasn't always the best. It started off, you know, as maybe a problem and then you addressed it. And now it's part of what makes you amazing. So, um, you know, as you grow, if you're bringing in three people, eight people, you know, every month, every couple of months, um, what kind of challenges do you, do you, have you had to kind of overcome regarding keeping that engagement and meeting everybody and you can't give everybody hoverboard lessons anymore. So curious to see how you, what do you think about that? I mean, personally, my challenge has been I used to be the person hiring everybody and I was mm -hmm. the one training and I was the direct report. This is you know, back years ago, but I got to really imprint culture into everybody. I was I personally chose them. Uh, and now, you know, we have we have layers of management. And and so the challenge was letting go of that and knowing how important that was. But instead going to really in, instilling a, um, a, a foundational culture of what we're looking for and teaching how to hire. And, um, you know, challenges now become, you know, making sure that we have consistent training across the board because, you know, the processes change all the time. Are we, are we keeping up to date with that? Or the company, our company is dynamic. We move fast. Almost every culture presentation I give, there's been changes to it. Uh, every month there's some sort of change. And so just being able to maintain the most up-to-date information and, and keeping, communication across the board so that they're all having the same type of experience at the same time. That's a challenge, uh, but it's a fun one to, to take on. Right. It's a, it's a, it's a moving target. It's kind of almost like, like you're playing the game, right? It's not, uh, right. it's not in the box is never checked, which, um, uh, you know, it's fun, can be exhausting as well, but, uh, that's the job, right? <laughs> so absolutely. So going forward, we, you know, we look to the future here in the digital marketing space. We've got all these things popping up like AI, like chat GPT. Um, we've got hybrid teams like TikTok is, is exploding. Like, what do you see the future of engaging uh, not only your team, but the community around you? It's interesting. We, uh, there's no getting away from technology advancing at a rapid pace, especially in this industry, in, in marketing and in content creation uh, and what have you. I think initially people have that fear of loss. We know that drives more decisions than anything. And so they fear their, uh, you know, to adopt this type of technology so that they maintain their role and their job and their value. And what I've been really trying to encourage people to do is look at uh, shifting from being someone who creates content to somebody who is a thought leader on content strategy and mm -hmm. using it as a tool. And I sort of equate AI right now to the the change that we had from a typewriter to a computer and using, you know, uh, spell check. It, it, it just makes it faster. It allows you to create better content at a, at a greater speed. And so, uh, 
if you can change your perception from, I fear this is gonna take over to, look what I get to create and how I get to evolve my career and my job using these new tools. It allows me to really focus in on higher level thinking, uh, the things that humans can really only do when it comes to that, that creativity piece uh, and connection. And that's a big one is that humans still wanna connect with other humans. That I, I don't think will go away. And mm -hmm. so you can spend the time connecting with humans and using the tool to do a lot of the work that takes you away from the connection. So I think people can lean into that more and they'll find uh, greater engagement and fulfillment in their roles. That's a really interesting shift in perspective, right? Somebody working for pod marketing, it's not, oh, I'm afraid that uh, AI is gonna take my job. It's how cool is it? We're using AI to tap into even more of my creative potential. I can even just like expand this these ideas even further, right? Very, two very exactly. different stories. <laughs> yeah, so it's just trying to get that mind shift and that perspective shift. So, you know, people fear what they don't know. That's a natural tendency. And so mm -hmm. I think it's our job as leaders to show them what could be and not what they fear it to be. Hmm, what could be, I like that. That's a great spot to, to, uh, to end off. But thank you so much, Kevin, for your time. I know you're a busy guy, but you've had some really cool ideas. I might steal a few of those onboarding ones from you. I like that. I uh, really appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks for watching The Culture Hack. Do you want to chat culture and engagement? Give us a call and come on the show.